Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we are going to do a top 15 list. These are my favorite 15 games of 2022. We did one mid-year, I'm doing one at the final end of the year. I had to give myself a little bit of time to get a couple last games I wanted to play. I'm excited for this list. If you wanna see Mike's list, I'll put a link in the description below. You can check out his and compare. We have very different games that we played, but there are some overlaps. All right, without further ado, let's jump in. These are my top 15 games of 2022. Number 15 is Agents of Smirsh. This game I really enjoy. I love going, doing random encounters and then finding henchmen, defeating the henchmen, and then ultimately going against Dr. Lobo. The big change with this newest edition of the game that came out in 2022 is they have made the final showdown so much cooler. Oh my gosh, it's an epic fight at the end. I absolutely love it. And against the henchmen, you can even do multiple henchmen together in one scenario. It is so so cool. The only negative I have in this game really has to do with replayability. Once you play through some of those final showdowns, it's going to be the same every time that you play. So it is a game that I felt like I could play through all of it, have a great time, and then move it along. But it's still one that I really, really love. That's Agents of Smirsh. If you enjoy dice rolling, some random encounters, and then a nice final showdown, this one's for you, Agents of Smirsh. Number 14 is Catharsis. This is a one to six player cooperative game where you're fighting against a boss. There are 11 different bosses in the game. Each boss is incredibly unique. Some of them are a straight boss battler, while others, they're gonna be hidden within their deck. You don't know when they're gonna show up. Some are actually dungeon delvers where you're delving into a dungeon, have to choose which way to go. Oh, it's so cool. Uh, the thing that I love so much is it's just like Dice Throne Adventures. You're gonna roll your dice up to three times, activating your abilities. When you play cooperatively, you all do it at the same time together so you can have fun synergies. If you take damage, you lose some of your ability cards. It is really, really cool. Uh, the biggest downside of this game for me is it just feels like it's not quite as polished. The box is way too huge. <laughs> Uh, and the, it's really hard to read some of the cards with the art choices and the fonts that they use. So I'm hoping with this second run, it's actually out on Kickstarter right now, uh, for a second run plus another expansion. It's something I'm definitely looking at. I hope you do too. That's Catharsis, Boss Battler, fun, let's do it. Number 13 is Dead Reckoning. This is a card crafting pirate game. It's one to four player competitive uh, solo or two player cooperative. I love two player cooperative, especially with the Saga expansion. You can play four to five scenarios back to back. You'll slot in certain cards and then they'll show up as you're playing. It's really cool. But the best part about this game is card crafting. You're going to place and purchase cards that will upgrade the cards you already have. So you always only have 15 cards in your deck. You're just going to make those cards better. You'll also level up the cards. So your Buccaneer will be able to do more things just by leveling them up from level one to four. It is so cool. You're also chucking cubes down a, a, a ship instead of rolling dice. And I think that's fun and unique and it's interesting. Yeah, this one is great. The only reason it's not as high on my list is because I don't feel like, it, like it's as good of a co-op solo game as some others on this list. But if you love pirates and you love the idea of card crafting, this one's for you. That's Dead Reckoning. Number 12 is G.I. Joe Mission Critical. If you've played Power Rangers Heroes of the Grid, it's very similar. It's the same type of game. You're moving around a circular board. You're protecting uh, those locations, trying to take out enemies. There'll be boss enemies that come in. You have to take them out, as well as henchmen in the way. Uh, I love the system. There was a couple things with Power Rangers I didn't love, and they fixed all of it with G.I. Joe. Uh, but the game is really fun because what you'll do when you go into combat, the enemies turn into cards and you've got some fun card play, but you're still chucking dice and these are chunky dice and you've got actions and abilities that you can do and you can work together. You can go on your own. Oh, it's so cool. Right now, the game definitely suffers from variability because there's not a ton out for it, but I assume more will come out and this game will creep up on the list with that. If you enjoy clever card play and some dice rolling, this one's for you. And of course, if you love G.I. Joe, you'll definitely love this one. Number 11 is Star of Akarios. This is a one to four player cooperative campaign game and it's set in space. What you're doing, you've got three different modes, three different gameplays when you're playing. 
One, you could be doing space battles, and those space battles are very similar to Gloomhaven, but instead of card play, you've got dice play. You're rolling your dice and activating the cards or abilities for your ships. You have planetary exploration. With that, it's kind of like Seventh Continent. You're exploring the planet, you're checking out different locations, reading from a log, and then finally, you also have your fleet itself that's traveling across the verse. That is really cool. So you've got three different modes. It is fully campaign. I will say the only reason this isn't as high on my list is I just feel like a lot of scenarios are very similar and there's just a ton of them. I wish it was a little bit less and there were more variety in the scenarios, but overall, it is a great game. I can't wait to keep going. I'm playing that with Barrett. That's Star of Akarios. Number 10, we have Zombie Side Undead or Alive. This by far for me is the best zombie side out there. First of all, I love that the theme is something unique. It's a Western themed game. There's not a lot of Western cooperative games out there, if I can think of any. I really can't. <laughs> uh, so that is great. They also have each character type has an archetype, and that archetype has special abilities. So every character has a little more going on for them, which I find is awesome. And then there's a campaign for that one that I have uh, on the channel right now. I have one scenario, and it is really fun. Uh, I find that the exploration there, the exploring the different cards, it creates a really fun and unique environment. It is still zombie side, so you'll still be chucking D6s, looking for certain amounts of successes, and there's going to be zombie, 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 zombie. So you have to be okay with that. But if you're looking to get into the zombie world, this is a good place to start. Zombie side, undead or alive. Number nine for me is Planet Unknown. This is a one to six player competitive game, but the solo game is great. What you're doing in this game is placing tiles out onto your planet and trying to cover up as much as possible to get all the benefits you can. You also have a rover you're moving around. You're trying to clear off meteorites. You've got a lazy Susan, and that's how you choose which of the different items you can grab and place on your planet. The game is super quick solo. It's simultaneous for competitive, so it also works great there. I love this game. It's one I always want to pull out whenever I have a group of people around. And if I need a quick solo game, this is it. It's so quick to play. Planet Unknown, great game, great for tile lane, and it's one that I can't recommend enough. Number eight, we have Keep the Heroes Out. This one caught me completely by surprise. I backed this one, totally forgot about it when it came to my door. I was like, oh, I'll give this a shot. This is so much fun. You get to play as the bad guys in the dungeons, and you got to keep those blasted heroes out. Uh, and each of the different factions of enemy types are incredibly unique, and they work in different ways. And then the heroes all can help each other, which is annoying. <laughs> Uh, I love this game. It's a puzzle, but it's a puzzle that you can play with kids or adults and still enjoy it. And the art is great. The gameplay is fun and challenging, and it's definitely one that I would recommend. And it's not super expensive. And the meeples look super cute. Keep the heroes out. If you want to be the bad guy for a bit, but still play cooperatively, a high recommend for me. That is Keep the Heroes Out, number eight. Moving to number seven, we have Lands of Galzir. All this game, you guys, if you enjoy a narrative game where you're exploring the world and it's not all negative and bad and depressing, <laughs> this game is for you. That is why I got this game. I play this with my kids. I'll play this with my wife. And we love it. You have great adventures. The stories are wonderful. They don't connect, and that's okay. They don't need to connect. You'll have certain quests that you'll go on. You might have one for your specific character. After you finish that, the world is your oyster. You've got tons of places you can go. After you play a session, you'll put it away, bring it out for the next month, and you can just keep going. I love it. I also love how the dice checks work in that game. You have black dice, and then when you have skills that are specific to the test that you're doing, you can change the black dice for the specific colored dice that you have, uh, and it can make it more likely that you succeed. But if you don't, it's not the end of the world. And I love that. It's great for kids, great for family. I'm not sure I would just play it myself solo, but I'm definitely enjoying it playing with my family, enough so that I have it as number seven on my list. That's Lands of Galzir. Coming up at number six is Return to Dark Tower. This game, I need to get a play throughout. It is so fun. My kids love this. I'll play it with adults or kids. It's great for both. If you're playing with adults, you can add in the expansions that make it a little bit more complex. But with kids, they love it because there's an app, there's a tower, you're dropping 
uh, skulls down on it. You're moving around the board. And as you can see, I've got a Lazy Susan I have it on. I highly recommend that. Can't recommend enough getting or making a Lazy Susan. That's what we did. My wife made it for me. So you can spin it around and you can see all the different sides of the board. Oh, it's so fun though. You're going around, you're trying to defeat foes, and then you, you always have a big boss. And every time that you play, you can mix and match those for a unique experience. The app also works great, and I love the push your luck of should I use some of my advantages now, but if I have to do more cards, it could be worse later. Oh, it's so great. The only detriment to that game for me is it's long. Just be ready for a long game. But other than that, I love Return to Dark Tower. That's my number six. Coming in at number five, we have Massive Darkness 2. I did not love Massive Darkness at all, the original. Never even thought about Massive Darkness 2, but then I kept hearing people talk about how good it was. I finally got it, got some of it painted. Oh my gosh, it's fun. Each of the classes that you play are incredibly unique. They have their own little mini game that you're, they're playing while you're also still delving into a dungeon, which of course is something that I love doing. <laughs> so you've got the dungeon delving, which is fun, and then you actually have something interesting for each of the characters. So it's not just, okay, I'm going to go in and whack something. It's, oh, if I'm the wizard, I have to figure out how to um, uh, manipulate my spells so I can activate the right one at the right time. Or if I'm the berserker, I can take some damage so I've got rage and I can use it back. Or if I'm the monk, I can use my chi to do different things. It's so fun. I love this game. Great for kids again, but also great for adults. Uh, the mini games keeps it interesting. I will say I don't ever play with more than three because I do think it can get a little long after that. Uh, but between one to three players, it's a wonderful game. Massive Darkness 2, a big recommend for me if you love dice chucking and dungeon crawling, but you want a little bit more meat onto it, but not a ton. This one is perfect. It's that great midweight. Massive Darkness 2. Number four for me, and I still can't believe this, is Nemesis Lockdown. I played the original Nemesis, didn't like it at all, sold it right away. I played Nemesis Lockdown with Berndt, and now it's the top four of 2022. <laughs> this game, the suspense is so great. I love how the aliens, you don't know their health. You don't know when they're gonna show up. Every step, you gotta roll for noise. You don't know what's gonna happen. I feel like this game is fantastic at not allowing you to become overpowered. So many games, you'll get that power creep, and at the end of the game, you're just blowing through things. Who cares, I'll walk into this room, whatever. This game, it doesn't matter. It could be right at the end of the game, and if one of those intruders show up, you're done. <laughs> I love that. I love the suspense and the thrill. The biggest negative I can think of for this game is just that it's a long game and some people might want to play competitive. For me, I would only play this cooperative and that's fine and I love it. Love it! I just want to keep playing it over and over again and I hope more games come out where you don't know the health of the enemies when you attack. In this game, you have to then flip a card and potentially you might kill it and you might not and I love that. That feels so thematic in this game where you're being stalked by these different intruders. That's my number four, Nemesis Lockdown. Number three on my list is Deep Rock Galactic. All oh, this game, I cannot believe it. After 20 plays, I still want to play it. This is a one to four player game where you're playing as dwarves going into a cave system, trying to collect certain uh, minerals and get out before it gets too rough. <laughs> Each dwarf has unique abilities. You also get to choose your secondary weapon and can overclock it. You can delve through the caves. You can dig your own ways through the caves, connecting other cave systems to it. Oh, it's so cool. It's hard to pinpoint the exact reason why I like this game so much, but the fact that I keep wanting to bring it to the table and my kids love it and my friends love it, why would I not have this at number three? Deep Rock Galactic, a high recommend for me if you enjoy dice chucking and you enjoy intensity and yet a lot of fun. We'll now move to number two on my list and that is ISS Vanguard. Oh, this game. This is almost perfect for me. <laughs> it's so close. I love planet exploration. I love seeing what designers as well as just general people can think of of unique worlds and how they can make it connect to us and yet still be something new and interesting. And so far ISS Vanguard has done that for me in droves. I love it. There's also the ship phase where you get to level up your ship. You level up your crew. You can gain different uh, abilities that then you bring to the planetary exploration. Oh, it's super fun. This is though a campaign game and it is a dice placement game. So during your turn, you're gonna pick up your dice and roll them and use them to activate different abilities of either cards or abilities on your, on your items or whatever it is. 
you also have to be okay with a big campaign. This is not a one-off game. This is a campaign game, and that's how you're going to get the most out of it. If you're in the market for a campaign planetary exploration game, this one is for you, ISS Vanguard. Finally, my number one, and this should be no surprise, it is Osworn Into the Deepwood. This game, I'm playing it with Barrent on his channel. I can't get enough of it. I love the two phases of the game. The story phase is fun and interesting. I know a lot of people don't love that it's on rails, meaning that no matter your choices there, you're always going to fight the same next boss as everyone else. But I actually don't mind that uh, because the stories are so different. I've played the first chapter three different times and I've had three different very unique stories within there and I'm quite impressed with that. But the stories are so engaging. The writing is so good. And then you go to the actual encounter and the uh, battle flow system with how the cards are laid out and how you have to get them back into your hand is uh, thought provoking, fun, enjoyable. And then each boss is unique. Oh my gosh, I can't get enough of it. I'm on chapter 12 <laughs> and I still want to play it. So to me, that is a huge positive and it's one that I know I'm going to finish. And so for me, that has to be my number one for 2022, Osworn Into the Deepwood. This, if you're looking for campaign, you're looking for a really good, interesting story with some great boss battlers, this one is for you, Osworn. That's my number one. So there you have it. That's my top 15 of 2022. I did put the rest of the games that I played from that were 2022 releases, just so you can see what they are. I don't have them really in a list after the 15. They're just kind of piled in there. So you can see the other 2022 games that I compared these to. Let me know what some of your favorites are from 2022 and what you're looking forward to in 2023. As always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you at the next stop.